Hey guys, so this is a live recorded game. Um, we're playing against Ayubits. He's one 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 four one two four two six zero. He's in his placement game. I didn't check to see what his previous ranked games are, but he must have some decent elo to be matched against me. <laughs> Oh, he's the funky pathing. I thought we'd run into the, the market here. But we didn't. Oh, it's over here. It's in the back side. Okay. Alright, that's okay. Um, I'm not sure if that's closer to us or not. And we went with this back. Back to scene. I kind of wish we placed it in the front now. Not gonna lie. Because it's not the major. The bad thing is, like, we wouldn't, like, get the major wood line, right? And that's kind of like the downside. But being on that forward position, really s sitting on that gold would have been nice. This isn't bad though, right? Because we got this uwu, we got this big wood line. That's the, I guess that's the big difference for us. Um, let's cut up actually. I want to try to catch the the market sheep, right? So we're gonna cut across. I mean, it's probably unlikely, but you never know. Yeah, and if he goes Desert Raiders, they'll get um, my Keshik. If I go Keshiks and he goes Desert Raiders, I'll get absolutely wrecked. So I'd rather go Manga Die against um, the Ayubits here. Um, Horsemen too are a better option against the against the um, the Desert Raiders. Keshiks just get absolutely destroyed. So I think this is actually closer for us, right? So we'll stay on this one. We'll trade to the north here. So I do think it's a little bit closer. By how much, it's kind of tough to say. But yeah, I think I think it's just ever so slightly closer. And we got a pretty good sheep haul too, right? I think we're close to like 12 sheep. So a little bit more than half I think we got. Yes, 
I can't believe that, um... We still don't get my upgrade. I just 
Damn, we almost got absolutely wrecked. I think because we just, like, he went wild with his villagers. And the only reason we kind of recuperated there. <sighs> and he's got to be... Uh, I have to check. Let me check. There's no way that he's not, like... This has got to be some sort of smurf account. But I mean, that was a that was a wild game. That was a wild ass game. So he was chilling on like no religious there. And basically, I just have to kite, right? I can just kite this. I didn't even have to engage with my Mangadai here. I probably should have just kept my Mangadai out of this and then kept the, the Horseman and the Keshik in the fight. Um, yeah, he's got 1400 ELO. And he's from China. I'm trying to remember. I'm pretty sure this guy was... I can't remember if this is CSOH um, or if it's someone else. It might just be a totally different player, but he's only got a couple games on. And I know it's like a Smurf account. Anywho. He pretty much BM'd us with the 
with that the the salt and tower push with like the men at arms with the with pulling all of his his troops up right or his villages up sending all of his villas like just as an all-in play right um i think those first couple of skirmishers like i saw them coming but i wasn't expecting it it's been so long since i've seen skirmisher play like that that um they had like a pretty good timing in like hurting us right so if we look at our villager count if we had gone Keshik's opener, we would have been good, right? But nobody goes Keshik opener, or nobody goes that trade wing anymore. So everyone's going Desert Raiders. So if they open Keshik, I actually go I'm in a bad spot. So that's why we went the Manganai opener, but you saw that was, you know, it's too late to actually to stop the skirmish on this, this small little map. So he really set our eco in a bad spot, like off rip, right? And then we were scaling with our with our trade, which was nice. He went with the growth wing um, on his eco, and then he loses all of his vills BMing us, right? But man, I think he was that was real close to killing us, right? That was real close to killing us. Cause like even from here, we're in a rough spot. Like we got one villager tapping up the TC just in case, and then I gotta put one villager to tap up something else. And we're on berries here, and we're on deer here, and we're just kind of spread out on the map. And he was just kind of buying stuff up with his uh, with his gold, right? Because he's all on gold. So this double tower really kind of messed up what we could do there. You know, maybe transitioning to stable earlier because I, 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 we messed up our opening pretty good there, um, and not just. Only because of losing the two villages, right? We lost, you know, messed up our build in terms of dropping our macro, right? We would have had, we would have had to reestablish here um, with our TC or with these pastures here. You know, I don't know if we would reestablish pastures here. And with these three, I could keep what like around, I don't know. Eventually, it'd only be like six villagers, right? But for now, I could probably keep around. Uh, 12 villagers busy with these sheep and we have a surplus sheep so I could probably pull all of these villagers onto here after this is done because I didn't I mean I got these berries right and yeah I can't believe he went <laughs> he did that that's just super BM kind of a play to do that um, and not expect us to like ignore his army and let our base kind of tank there but that that tower of the Sultan does a lot of freaking work there we got a lot more food, a lot more gold, or even a lot more gold. Yeah, so at this point, I mean, like, he was all in, so we, we just lose, or he just loses, losing this army, right? He's just surviving off of this. Ghoulams. Spam. That's crazy. I wonder, and, and you know, that's probably what he's just doing for, like, an opener against people and his placements. He's just doing this kind of spammy build, and, like, a good... I don't know, Byzantines or some other save. It's definitely too late because you're going to be getting pressure on this tower, right? Um, on this gold. But since I go all cav, I just kind of back off and let him do his thing. And while we do our thing behind it, um, you know, maybe we were just a little bit late on getting this uh, on this curl tie up, right? And that was definitely going to hurt in us. Taking out the Desiraters with the Manganos. This, this last engagement was probably... Was probably a pretty bad fight with the with the manga there in the front because we got two manga there in the front that we're gonna lose. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit of a bad decision there. But we've got another couple coming out, and the triple stables was kind of what um, let us hold it, right? If we don't have that triple stables down, we just die. And then I'd say pulling our villagers when we did down to other areas was a good move. Because we thought that again, we're in a really bad spot. 14 traders was nice too. 83. You know, be, trading our gold for food is pretty much what kept us afloat there, which is just pretty crazy how strong that um, um, trade wing into growth wing and just trading, like the tickets on the trade wing is still a pretty strong, a pretty strong thing. So, um, yeah, that was a pretty crazy match. <laughs> I was not expecting that kind of a push at all.
Bells. Not so loud. Um, this next one, I'll just put a uh, pause on here and then we'll resume once we find a match. Okay, so we found another match now. We are playing against Nathan. Once again on Cliff's side. And um, he's a diamond too. It looks like he was diamond in season six. 68% win rate is really strong though, so he might not have actually finished in diamond. Um, and he should have around 1400 ELO. And uh, yeah, we'll just do another Mongols game here. Ayavids. Everyone's playing Ayavids. So, again, Ayavids, I mean, you can see certain builds. That rush build is really hard for us to like deal with properly. Um, Hopefully we're getting to this side before he is, but no real way of guaranteeing that. Okay, here's the trade post. We'll just come around this tree line. Okay, it's bared. Like this back gold forward Uvu is pretty rough for us. So if he does that, like that trade wing opening we just faced. We might be kind of in a rough spot again because now we're not gonna be able to like drop our production building up there. But I don't expect that that trade wing to happen again. I think more people are gonna do the desert, the desert raider opener because it's more meta, and people do like to stick to meta a lot more. That a sheep or was a sheep. Two back goals, which is nice. Get this sheep over to here. Let's come over here. So I think, yeah, we try to just cut across here and get over to his side. Because his side should be free. So I'm digging that little cut off there. Okay, we got this front sheep. Don't see a wing coming up yet. So I think we're a little bit ahead of him on his build, but I'm not sure if the Ayobid, like, House of Wisdom was a little bit bugged or something like that. Okay, we got three on wood. I don't see anything. I don't know if that's getting built. And that might be a military wing. Yeah, I don't know. It's tough to say with the, the eye of it buildings. But we did pick up a couple of sheep in this middle span, so he definitely went over and across. So that's a good um, pickup for us here. Or it's nice to get that much sheep on the secondary run. That's eight. So we didn't get that many sheep on that first run. So, that means he probably headed over and across. And because of the time that it took him to do that, I think... I think he went this way. I, I think he went this way. I don't think he went back all the way. 
Ihnen. He's aged up. We don't know with what. Pushing off for bears is nice. Jerry, 
It's a big villager pick. So he split his vill so he wouldn't get like picked like that. And it worked out actually against him. And the young Herich the boy, Yomi Yobot 
Okay, should be able to catch Bills again here. Okay, I think you saw we were going to come in and dive here again, right? We didn't actually have a good amount of cavalry, uh, regular cavalry, to like break his um, his towers. A little bit unfortunate, but we got really good food picks, right? So he split his army, or he split his food villagers onto um, different into different food sources, which is a smart move, it's a safe move. But again, the, the danger becomes if you get picked out right. And um, we knew he was going to be doing a food transition. And we were looking for that food transition. And we were able to catch him with good timings on that food transition, right? We were able to hit a couple different spots. And then we hit him here. And he made a pretty big mistake. Like, he saw our army running this way. And he didn't react in time with these villagers. Like, he forgot about these villagers. And if he plays this proper, right, he pulls these villagers back. Or he drops a tower earlier. Either way, he, you know, he... He saves those villagers because he loses a lot of villagers there. Right? That's where he loses a ton of bills. Um, you know, he was getting, you know, little snipes here and there. We were harassing his wood line. But really it was the... Our trade was really popping off there. But it was that that's this big raid, I'd say, was the most... Like, we got some decent damage here. We kind of messed up the micro. And we weren't able to pick all of those bills. It would have been really good if we were able to pick off all, like, eight of those bills that were there. But this was a pretty big swing in terms of his um, his army size and income, right? And he was still able to crank out a good amount of units, but as long as we keep our production going, right? So we you know switched up plenty of of um, ranges. We got five ranges and we got um, three stables. So we're sitting in a good spot there, and we're getting our transition here. I would like to see another another gird dropped here, and then I would probably pull. Uh, one or two of these will probably just one of these wheels to go build more infrastructure back here um, at this point 
I'd probably drop like two or three more stables. And then um, our trade is starting to get close to saturated, right? And we're getting close to this point where we just can naturally go up to um, castle without really having to like stop our production, right? And, and like we'll have to stop our production, but at this point we're, we're like, um, we can really comfortably go up to castle. We're sitting at 1300 food a minute. So just like one minute, no production. And um, yeah, we're going to have our curl tie up. And that's going to yeah, totally switch the dynamics. But um, this even picking this one villager with that one that one rotation was pretty big. We are stealing his deer here, which is nice. And then behind this, I don't think we would go up and take these deer. I think we would rotate over here, kill this boar, and then onto these berry bushes and just kind of work our way backwards from there. So um, this worked out pretty good. But yeah, this is... Uh, that was, a, that was a good rotation and kind of switching between forces. I do like his timing push that he kind of did here, but uh, he got kind of baited into fighting a little bit right at the edge of one of the TC, so he was taking damage there. And um, we probably could have done a little bit better job of fighting that as well. And that one big fight where he kind of had that big blob here, um, I think you want to say it's the burst, the first big fight. Probably right here. This is where we traded off our con, I'm pretty sure it was right here. Yeah, that's where I traded off our con for a few villagers. Which again, I don't know, you know, it's debatable, but I think trading your con and four Mangadai for we killed, I think, three or four villagers is going to be worth it, right? It's going to really switch the tempo um, in terms of like, see, our, even our villager production was kind of messing up and that kind of fixed that and switched the tables on it. And top of our trade, it really uh, switched it up. Um, but yeah, his... Uh, Here's one fight here that we took. There was just like a couple of spearmen and we're just kind of letting our armies kind of like auto fight. And if I think if we had kept doing that, we probably would have traded out almost kind of poorly. And so what kind of helped tip that in the favor was grabbing our Keshiks, wrapping it around his, his, you know, taking a few of our Keshiks and wrapping them around and starting to dive onto those archers because it's really important that we start chewing down those archers. And then taking our Mangadai and focusing on the spearmen that were there, right? Because the spearman is really what's going to chew up our army. So once we had kind of properly focused our micro there, that really helped um, turn that, that fight into our favor. So, um, yeah, overall, I think a pretty good match. That first match was wild. Like, uh, um, I think if he doesn't do that that BM move with all of his villagers, we probably would have died there. Um, which is important to know, right? The, the Iabit Fast Castle... The higher elo we're gonna get, the more we're gonna, the more constant we're gonna see that, and we're kind of seeing that like, what do we have to uh, in terms of answers for that? We need to have a really good Keshik mass, mash, ah, mash, <laughs> a really good Keshik mass to deal with it. Otherwise, we're not gonna be able to like kind of hold. Um, and we were heavy on Mangadite, and he kind of read into that. And if we were heavier on Keshik um, against that tower, we probably would have held that a lot better because there's only like 10 or so Gulams, right? So, and then letting him get those barracks up without harassing him enough was probably kind of a mistake. As well not playing the idle game with his tower here, but, or with his gold tower on that other game. But in this one, we didn't really harass his gold because he was, we saw the range, we saw the barracks, and we saw his army going infantry to deal with us. So we weren't really too worried about it um, in terms of his gold. We figured if he's just getting it for unit production, he's going to be focusing mostly on a feudal play against us, which he did. And, um, yeah, it's just about taking good fights, rotating, and, and finding that food transition. You find his food transition before he finds your food transition, uh, which was ours was ballsy, right? We went forward on this deer patch, and his army was right here. Like, if he had just walked over, we're, you know, we're dead there, right? And we got to fall back to this barrier, this back. And then he never really, like, contested our trade too much right like he was fighting here but he never really went up here to fight which is you know kind of like he probably had a good window there to kill like five or six traders easy while we were still kind of massing up to deal with his push right because we traded our four mangadai out here and our army kind of like suffered at our base because of it so um interesting little like tempo switches and stuff like that so um yeah so that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys and i'll catch you on the next one